Now, what does God permit now? God, for the first time, opens that kingdom for the invasion of a major nation. What happens? It came to pass that in the fifth year of King Rehoboam, Shishak, king of Egypt, came up against Jerusalem because they had transgressed against the Lord. That is the thing. And what happened? Well, he took Jerusalem and he lugged away quite a bit of the gold and the wealth of that kingdom. And what happened? You remember the shields of gold that David had brought and Solomon put there? Well, in verse 10, instead of which, King Rehoboam made shields of brass and committed them to the hands of the chief of the guard that kept the entrance of the king's house. This man now has to begin to bring in something inferior. No longer do they have shields of gold. They have shields of brass. What has happened? The judgment of God is upon them because of their sin. This was a great humbling experience for Rehoboam. He had been brought up in the affluence of the reign of Solomon and had seen all the blessing that had come, and he just thought that was going to go on forever. But now he sees that there's probably an end to it. And verse 12, when he humbled himself, the wrath of the Lord turned from him, that he would not destroy him altogether. And also in Judah, things went well. It's a very interesting statement. The minute they turned, this man humbled himself. God immediately withdrew judgment upon him and the people of Judah. Now we read in verse 13, So King Rehoboam strengthened himself in Jerusalem and reigned, for Rehoboam was one and forty years old when he began to reign, and he reigned seventeen years in Jerusalem, the city which the Lord had chosen out of all the tribes of Israel to put his name there. And this is interesting. And his mother's name was Naamah, an Ammonitess. Now, you will recall that David was very friendly with the Ammonites. And although they made war against him, he'd been friendly. Now, we find here Rehoboam, a son of Solomon, that his mother was an Ammonitess. And that probably had something to do with the character of this man. As we saw in Kings, God always gives the man's mother. Why? Because she bears some of the responsibility. If he turns out to be a good king, she gets the credit. If he turns out to be a wicked, evil king, she takes part of the blame. She must. Now we are told in verse 14, he did evil because he prepared not his heart to seek the Lord. Now the acts of Rehoboam, first and last, are they not written in the book of Shemaiah the prophet and of Iddo the seer concerning genealogies? And there were wars between Rehoboam and Jeroboam continually. Rehoboam slept with his fathers. He was buried in the city of David. And Abijah, his son, reigned in his stead. 